Welcome everyone, this is 17th of August and I am explaining the Indian Express. I will explain this newspaper in three steps. First, why is this news? Second, what is the news? And third, what are the future prospects of the news? So our first news is, CM's approval now must for transfer of UP government employees. This decision is aimed at filtering unnecessary proposals for transfers. So why is this news? This news is because a controversy has occurred uh, regarding the transfer of PWD Health Department Jal Shakti officers. So UP government chief minister has taken an action that his approval would be mandatory in transfer of any government employee in the near future. So as you can see, after the end of the transfer period, as per the annual transfer policy for 2022-2023, approval of the CM would be required for all types of transfer of personals of Group A, Group B, Group C and Group D. So this is a new row or anomalies that occur in last few days. Our next news is, as its ship dock in Lanka port, Beijing says this is life. And uh, I will explain what are the future prospects of this news. Future prospects are that it will obviously filter unnecessary proposals of transfer, but can also lead to delay in some transfers. This can uh, make the transfer process more lengthy. So our next news is, Beijing says this is life. As you know, why is this news? This news is because Beijing means China is docking a ship in Lanka's Hamban Tota port. It is a tracking ship that it is used to spy on India, on Indian southern coast. As you know, Indian southern coast consists of many uh, important and Secure, uh, security bases important places such as uh, ISRO which is our space base and many naval bases are located in port, many uh, port areas are also there. So uh, previously Lanka has postponed the docking of the ship but now uh, the ship has been docked. So. What is the news? I will explain as the Chinese ballistic missile and satellite tracking ship Yuan Wong 5, this is the name of the ship Yuan Wong 5, has arrived Tuesday morning at Hamban Tota port, which is a strategically important deep sea port in south of Sri Lanka. The China says that activities of its vessel will not affect the security of any country. It is saying that this vessel will not affect any security of India and it should not be obstructed by any third party. It referred to India and its security concerns. So when uh, the uh, Xi Zhengzong was asked about the delay in the visit of Chinese ship, he said that I don't know, you should ask the Indian friends, I don't know, maybe this is life. Because India has obviously uh, not obstructed you can say but has uh, showed its concern regarding the docking of ship, uh, it, the ship in Sri Lanka. Now Sri Lanka which has deferred the visit of the uh, Chinese military vessel as I have told you deferred means postponed. Sri Lanka had in the uh, last Saturday postponed the visit of this ship but now it has been docked. And we will see more. Following concerns raised by India and then made a U-turn and allowed the ship pocket hump and Dota port from August 16 to 2022. What is this ship uh, significance? This is a powerful tracking vessel whose significant aerial reach reportedly upon 750 kilometers. Uh, as I will told you that minimum distance between Sri Lanka and India is 
150 kilometers and this ship can track up to 750 kilometers that is nearly six times means that several ports in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh could be on China's radar. So there was no official response from New Delhi to this uh, recent development. Sunday, uh, President Ranil Vikram Singh said that China will not be allowed to use the port of Hamban Dota for military purpose. But last week, it has taken U-turn and Sri Lanka's spokesperson for external affairs had said that Sri Lanka is a sovereign country and it can make its own independent decision. So, as you know, Yuan Wong 5 has successfully birthed and with the active cooperation from Sri Lankan side, and you can see that India and US have shown concerns over ship. So, Wang said, I want to stress again that the marine scientific research activities of the Yuang Wong 5 are consistent with international law and international common practice. So they are saying that we follow the international law and what has been practiced till now and they say that they do not affect the security and economic interest of any country. Now they are referring to India and they are saying that we will not affect any kind of economic or security concerns but the uh, ship should not be obstructed by any third party. They are saying this too. He said the ceremony was attended. This is not even important. So what is this uh, Yuang Wong class ship is used for? This is used to track satellite. This is used to track rocket and intercontinental ballistic missile launches. As you know, our India's southern port is very important. Uh, southern coastal region is very important for such activities to track satellites, rocket, intercontinental ballistic missiles or are being launched from our southern region. So this ship supplements Beijing land-based tracking station. So Beijing is already tracking from land which is uh, in the northern region from Ladakh region and now it is uh, expanding its uh, track, expanding its spy on India through waters that is through Indian Ocean too. In the past too, India has taken a strong view of the presence of Chinese military vessels in the Indian Ocean and has raised the matter with Sri Lanka. Now India and China's ties have come under strain in the in the past for Chinese nuclear powered submarine to dock at one of its port in 2014. So there was also a clash or you can say there was also a kind of disagreement regarding the nuclear power submarine that was to be docked in 2014. Now in also in 2017, Colombo leased the Humban Tota port to China for 99 years in uh, because it was unable to pay the loan commitment. China is the main creditor of Sri Lanka in investment and infrastructure. As you know, China is making and expanding its infrastructure services in Sri Lanka in order to pressurize Sri Lanka to do whatever it wants. So debt restructuring of Chinese loan is the key to the island's success in talks with International Monetary Fund for bailout. As you know, Sri Lanka is in economic crisis and it wants some loan and monetary assistance from International Monetary Fund. And without the support of other countries such as China and other countries that without the uh, support of India, International Monetary Fund is not giving the uh, monetary support to it. But China is backing Sri Lanka and it is backing because China is having its own benefit in Sri Lanka such as docking this ship which is it has docked. India on the other hand has been Sri Lanka's lifeline in the ongoing economic crisis and it has given assistance of nearly 4 billion dollars. 
since the start of the crisis. So next come the news which is Express Network. As you say, Talaq-e-Hassan practice not so improper. This is been said by Supreme Court. Uh, so why is this news? As you know, uh, you may not know that a Muslim woman reached Supreme Court saying that her husband has practiced talaq e hasan now I explain what is talaq e hasan talaq e hasan and triple talaq are two different things. Triple talaq is when a Muslim man says talaq three times in a row at same time. But talaq e hasan is when a Muslim man says talaq to his wife once a month means every month and to three months. And Supreme Court is saying that this is not so improper. So this is a story, this story is not so important. What the Supreme Court has said is important. It has said that the triple talaq, uh, that prima facie, uh, said that this is not triple talaq and that prima facie, this is not so improper. He added that Muslim women also have the option of khula. I will tell you what is khula. There are three terms, khula, meher and mubarat. So khula is when a woman, Muslim woman, initiates a divorce and she wants to get separated. Now what is meher? Meher is the uh, some possessions or a form of money, jewelry, gold or any kind of economic thing or you can say financial thing that is given by groom to the uh, girl or bride at the time of Islamic marriage uh, at the time of Islamic marriage that when occurs the groom is obligated or bound to give some possessions to the to his future wife and there is Mubarat. Mubarat is uh, like you can say mutual uh, divorce you can say both sides wants to divorce each other so this is uh, Mubarat. So what the Supreme Court has said, Supreme Court has added that Muslim women also have the option of khula. If the two people cannot live, live together, the court grants divorce on the ground of irretrievable breakdown of marriage and whether the petitioner is open to divorce by mutual contest, uh, consent if meher is taken care of. Call also said that without interventions of the court, there is mubarat which is permissible by consent. As I've told you, Mubarak is like mutual divorce and I don't want this to become an agenda for any other reason. So what are the future prospects? So this is uh, a key feature. This talaq ke hasan uh, is not triple talaq but can take form of triple talaq. As you know, triple talaq is banned but uh, this can also uh, make a women suffer as you know this has been so if the uniform civil code as you know is uh, coming in the future abhi it's not but it will come in the future so when this uniform civil code will come all these issues may be solved so next come the world news so this is a news blast hit Russian arms deport in Crimea. Ukraine hints at likely role. So as you know, Russia and Ukraine war is going on and Russia is trying to invade Ukraine. So these are the uh, occurrings that are now being we have uh, witnessed and what has occurred? Explosions rocked a Russian ammunition depot on the occupied Crimean Peninsula on Tuesday morning, delivering another blow to Moscow's force a week after blast at a Russian airbase in the same region destroyed several fighter jets. So a week before they had blast, Ukraine has blast Russian airbase in the same region and had destroyed several fighter jets. So this has occurred. 
and what are the future prospects no one knows what will occur in the future as you know russia and ukraine are face to face fighting and us is backing ukraine ukraine was a small country with not so strong military but because us is backing uh, because us is backing ukraine that's why this war is uh, longing you can say but we don't know what will occur in the future and moving forward to our next news which is very very important slamming us hegemony putin predicts end of unipolar world so why the putin has said that and why is this news as you know uh, before the soviet union collapsed in 1990s there were two multi poles in this world first was us and second was ussr which is soviet union so it is saying that uh, putin has predicted the end of unipolar world and has accused also us of trying to maintain their hegemony by backing ukraine so russian president vladimir putin accused the us of trying to encourage extended hostilities in ukraine as part of what he described as its alleged efforts to maintain global hegemony so he is saying that us is trying to encourage this war so that it maintains the global hegemony putin was addressing security conference that was attended by military officers for from three continents which is africa asia and latin america and he has reaffirmed his long held claim that he sent troops into ukraine in response to washington turning the country into an anti russia bulwark so he is accusing that us had he is uh, accusing us again that us had turned ukraine into an un- anti russia so they that's why they are invading or you can call they are having conflicts with the ukraine so putin also accused us that that they need conflicts to retain their hegemony and that's why they have turned the ukrainian people into an non cannon fodder so the situation in ukraine shows that us is trying to drag the conflicts out and it's act in exactly the same way trying to fuel conflicts in asia africa and latin america so he is also accusing that he is doing the same also in continents such as asia africa and latin america because as you know not us but china has also accused us of uh making a conflict between china and taiwan because nancy pelosi visited taiwan and also after she visited the five lawmakers of us also visited taiwan and it is being said that they had not done any benefit for taiwan they have just raised issues of taiwan and also Nancy Pelosi called Taiwan a country. Obviously, it was a mistake uh, in her words, but she has said that. And how China will take that? It depends upon how US moves in the in its next step. So it was also said that Taiwan is in conflict with China because of US. So Putin is also accusing that he is. trying to fuel conflicts in asia africa and latin america putin also drew parallels between us backing ukraine and a recent visit to taiwan by us house speaker nancy pelosi charging that both were parts of an alleged american attempt to foment global instability so he is also as i've told you all this story he is also accused of recent visit to taiwan by Nancy Pelosi Putin said that western global elites they were trying to shift the blame for their own failures to Russia and China and he added that no matter how hard 
the beneficiaries of current globalist model try to cling it it's doomed so they are saying putin is saying that no matter how hard they try it's going to be doomed it's going to end he said that era of the unipolar world is nearing its end so he is saying that you, it will he is saying that russia will rise as a new pole so the unipole will end also what he said next uh this is it and we will see what the us will respond of this accused by putin as you know this is a very big accused by any country country's president vladimir putin has accused us and we will see what he will do so we will see next is the economy page construction food msme which is micro small and medium enterprises fuel post covid credit rise so there is a incremental credit growth to msme on an upswing so why is this news this news is because these uh, msmes these are the ones that are involved in investment in technology which is driving the post covid credit growth in the sector as you know when covid occurred in our india the growth became very very slow and now this is the sector this msme is the sector that is coming strong after covid and it was also strong when covid was going on so it is saying that among micro small and medium enterprises those involved in food products and construction materials so it's talking particularly about the food products and particularly about construction materials as well as the ones that were involved in investments in technology are driving the post covid credit growth in the sector so the lenders who were investing in msme say that e-commerce was strong even during pandemic uh, you can say it was strong because when pandemic occurred you people also may have booked many a things online whether which you have uh, bought in the past with face to face or you can call in physical transaction you people also may have shifted to e-commerce or you can say electronic or internet based shopping so it has said that and retail and food services picked up about a year back so companies that have seen an increase in borrowing in terms of percentage of total disbursals include food products which has seen an uptick of around 14% in fiscal year 19 to nearly 20% in fiscal year uh in fiscal year 21 22 so also saying that during the same period the construction materials industry it has also shown a increase of around 4% to 7% as i've already told you that msme sector was a one of the worst hit during the pandemic and resultant lockdowns led to loss of business but few uh, products that msme sell such as food products and other uh, essential uh, items you can say these were not at loss but other things were at loss we have seen a strong pick up in demand for credit over the past 12 months across these categories so it's saying in the last year it has seen a strong pick up it means a strong rise in the demand for credit in terms of gradation e-commerce continued to be strong to the course of pandemic retail food services sector picked up about picked up about 12 months back so it's saying that e-commerce was already strong as 
as I've told you why. But the retail food services sector, these have picked up or you can say have risen after about one month and travel has seen a strong revival over the past six to nine months. So it is also talking about incremental credit that MSME sector has been on an upswing and why around 74% of such is purely because of credit guarantee scheme and the remaining 26% is because of other schemes which include the definitional change in MSME sector. So it's saying that 74% is because of the credit guarantee scheme that government provides and remaining 26% is because it included more things in the MSME sector which is it included definitional change means it included more elements or products in the MSME sector. So the emergency credit line guarantee scheme which was unveiled as a part of comprehensive package which was announced by government in March 2020. This emergency credit line guarantee scheme, why this was announced? This was announced to help, to aid the MSME sector because it was going through economic distress in the COVID-19 pandemic. So around 2.36 lakh crore has been dispersed to MSME under ECLGS. However, it's not just the pandemic, the sector is also suffering from delayed payments. Not just pandemic because of the delay in payments that the MSME receive. This has also make this sector suffer. Data from Bangalore based non-profit Global Alliance for which is GAME, data analytics company. It has said that delayed payments to MSME sector have increased to 10.7 lakh crore till the end of 2021. It has said that because of this delayed payment and this what is the payment uh, amount? This is 10.7 lakh crore, about 81% of total amount is owed to small and micro enterprises. As you know, MSME is also medium, small and micro. So this 81% is of small and micro enterprises and this 80, uh, this percentage is 4.29 lakh crore to small enterprises and 4.44 lakh crore to micro enterprises. The demand for credit has not been driven by desperation of funds but by the growth opportunities available to these businesses. So it is saying that why this, uh, why this demand for the credit has increased? It has increased not because of the desperation of funds, desperation of money, but because the opportunities that were available to these business, the growth opportunities that were available to these kind of business and also given the sharp uptick in digitization during the pandemic period. As you may also have noticed that the digital uh, upliftment or you can say digitization in our India increased very much, increased more than many folds in the pandemic period. More of that demand is getting channeled to digital lenders and this is, this is the demand is going to the digital lenders also. So next come the explained page and there is a case that occurred in our country in 2002. What was the case? There was a case uh, of Bilkis Pano murder and Cangrape case of 2002 and what has occurred now remission has occurred there was there were 11 convicts that were jailed because of their deeds but now they have rem remitted what is remission remission is you can say 
reducing the number of years that a person had to spend in jail it is actually uh, cutting the years that person has so what has occurred i will first explain you what are the laws on remission under article 72 and 161 of the constitution the president and governors have the power to pardon to suspend remit or commute a sentence passed by the court but you may be uh, knowing that governors do not have the right i can say the power to pardon a death sentence so also since prisoners is a prison is a state subject so state government have powers under section 432 of the code of criminal procedures to remit sentences but not death sentences how is section 433a of the crps puts certain restrictions on these power of remission it say that where a sentence of imprisonment for life is imposed on conviction of a person for an offense for which death is one of the punishment provided by law or where a sentence of death imposed on a person has been commuted under section 433 into one of the imprisonment for life such person shall not be released from prison until unless he has served at least 14 years of imprisonment so it's talking about two cases it's talking about the conviction of a person for he, uh, for whom death is one of the punishment or the death punishment has been commuted uh, commuted means changing the uh, uh, type of punishment into some other type which is commuted under into one of the imprisonment for life such kind of person shall not be released from prison unless he had served at least 14 years of imprisonment so what are the grounds for remission i will tell you in uh, short uh, there are five grounds of remission whether the offense is an individual act of crime that does not affect the society when the offense is an individual act of crime and does not affect the society whether there is a chance of crime being repeated in future whether the convict has lost the potentiality to commit crime so these are the factors that are kept in mind while giving such uh, orders whether the convict has lost the potentiality to commit crime whether any purpose is being served in keeping the convict in prison and socio economic conditions of the convict families these five conditions are kept in mind are the five grounds on which remission is uh, considered so minimum of 14 years uh, convicts serving life sentences are entitled to seek remission only after serving a minimum of 14 years those who are given uh, punishment of life imprisonment they can only seek remission when they have completed at least 14 years in prison so what is a bilkis case convict bilkis case convict radhe sham shah moved the supreme court this year after he had completed 15 years and 4 months of his life term awarded by cbi court in mumbai so this had Uh, this person had gone to the supreme court and he has been remitted so the main news is what happens now advocate shopa uh, shobha gupta who represented bilkis banard supreme court earlier he said that the legal remedy available to bilkis now would be to challenge the government's order allowing early release of the 
eleven convicts. So they, uh, he, she said that they will challenge this order of the court, and it can be challenged like any other government order, seeking that government order be quashed and set it aside. However, it is up to her on whether she wants to exercise this remedy or not. Supreme Court has ordered a compensation of fifty lakh for Bilkis in two thousand nineteen. So this is the news. The convict has been remitted. And what will happen now? Now the party can uh, challenge the government's order. This depend upon Bilkis, the main. survivor and what will happen in the future this can uh, be shocking to many persons because the crime they had committed was a heinous crime you can say and this will affect the society in a way but also this is a part of constitution so we will see in the future whether she challenges it or not so this was all the news that i've told you today's newspaper was uh, not so short as but it was very important as uh, very important news such as putin's news this case and other such news came out you can read it as well 